What you're going to hear today is one of the most revealing arguments into a novel dark technology. I was approached by a viewer who immediately got my attention by sending multiple emails with supporting documentation into his group's research. It answered a lot of questions, but he obviously knew the big picture. And I was playing catch up. If I make a sphere of aerogel, a shell. I invited him to join me in a recorded Zoom call, which he graciously agreed to. Everything you are about to hear is not classified. Josh and his team have meticulously put together public domain information to reveal a deeply hidden technology. This novel idea is not exclusively American. The so-called Chinese spy balloons demonstrated many of the low visibility, long loitering and networking capabilities of these new devices. A military technology hidden from plain sight by its counterintuitive nature. Their research offers an insight into what the Mosul balloon might really be. Helping to explain the apparently advanced propulsion witnessed from the Tic Tac, but it goes further. Josh offers his thoughts on why Commander David Fravor, the most senior naval aviator, was apparently selected to have his encounter with this type of UAP and adds deep new meaning to retiring Arrow Administrator Sean Kirkpatrick's statement, most UAP are what he glibly described as balloons. Josh has convinced me of the fact that they are far from simple balloons. He has convinced me that they are a highly funded multinational network of surveillance drones that can invisibly hover overhead, move through air or water, and demonstrate incredible speeds. Here's my raw recorded conversation with Josh. Treat him with the respect he deserves for bravely coming forward to reveal what he thinks is really going on behind the curtain. Hey viewers, I'm joined by a very special guest tonight who reached out to me after seeing a video where I was first exploring the actually strange concept of making a vacuum balloon, a lighter than aircraft with no air. Josh has been researching the ideas of an aerogel based balloon system for many years. And tonight he's going to explain what he's found and let's go over how they might work. So Josh, vacuum balloons, what are they? Hi, uh, Simon. It's nice to be here with you. you. Um, vacuum balloons are a concept that's been around for a while. It essentially is a rigid structure. Um, the two most common shapes are spheres and rounded cylinders. Uh -huh. uh, the shell of the object uh, acts as a vacuum chamber, holding a vacuum inside of it right. that is separated from the external pressure of the atmosphere. The fact that there's a vacuum in it, if the materials are light enough, can cause neutral buoyancy with the atmosphere. And if the materials are actually lighter than air, you can experience lift versus the atmosphere. So many people have experimented with vacuum balloons. There's some fantastic black and white illustrations from different countries in the world. And of course, the best way to contain a vacuum back in the day would be by metal spheres or cylinders, as you said. But how on earth could you contain a vacuum with some material that is lighter than, than the craft? So the craft could be actually buoyant. And you've come across a material called aerogel. What's aerogel? Uh, aerogel is a material that was actually invented as far back as 1930. Uh, it's been developed by NASA uh, through the years. Uh, it's right. also been worked on by the Department of Energy. Um, mm. Aerogel is a uh, puffed material where it's partially uh, 
empty space and partially a uh, silicon based material for the earliest forms of aerogel. There are now alloys of aerogel called uh -huh. alloys that are stronger and provide more rigidity than the original right. aerogels. So the original aerogels would, would be incredibly light, but incredibly fragile and wouldn't have the possibility of having to be able to contain, say, a vacuum. So how what happened next? How, what kind of who was working on and who invented an idea of a material, an aerogel material that could actually contain a vacuum? And how does it work? I mean, it's a it's a foam. How why doesn't the vacuum, why doesn't air go rushing in? So tell me about a vacuum resisting aerogel. Who developed that? So uh, all aerogels actually resist vacuum in both directions. They're bi-directionally vacuum proof. Uh, oh. I, it's easiest uh, to describe this in the words of Dr. Marianne Meter, a research chemical engineer and team lead for aerogels at NASA's Glenn Research Center. Right. Uh, she describes it as the pores of aerogel are so small and the gas phase heat conduction is also very poor. Because of these two combined facts in the material of aerogel, molecules of air cannot pass through the material as they are simply bigger than the empty spaces that are left in the material itself. Oh, clever material science. But the aerogel would have to be structurally strong enough to actually um, maintain a structure that wasn't crushed by the atmospheric pressure. Yeah, I've mentioned uh, in my previous comment that there's a uh, material called alloys, and uh, okay. instead of forming a basic silica aerogel, uh, they produce an alloy that has the interior spaces of the aerogel coated with a polymer. The polymer then acts to rigidify the, right. the aerogel material itself while maintaining all of its other properties, heat resistance, uh, low weight. Fantastic. So if you got, maintains rigidity. So if you've got a sphere of this, um, which no doubt could be produced and evacuated as a vacuum, what would, what would be the uh, characteristics if you let go of a sphere of this um, alloy aerogel with an ev evacuated interior? What would it do? If I make a sphere of aerogel, a shell, that right. has a hollow area on the inside for a vacuum and right. draw a vacuum in the aerogel bubble, mm -hmm. when I let it go, it'll rise up on its own with no power required, no fuel required. And I believe that this has already been done by the US government. There is a document on the OSTI's public internet that right. describes spherical shell vacuum vessels that have already been produced by the Department of Energy. Wow. Oh, that's a very, I, I'm getting it. So it's a vacuum balloon that it has a structure which is which is strong enough to retain to not be crushed by air pressure. And no doubt it would, um, its buoyancy uh, from sea level to altitude could be controlled by the level of the vacuum. So you could in fact have a vertically stable um, sphere that you could, by altering its pressure, you could, it could hover at exactly the kind of altitudes. And maybe I'm intrigued to know what kind of speed it would shape. It would, it would, it would, how, how fast it would accelerate between these loitering. At, oh, it, it's mind blowing. And, and yeah, of course, you could use it as a, um, as a long duration um, drone if it could also contain some um, lightweight electronics. Do you think people yeah. are working on that? Uh, I, I can prove that people are working on this. The research papers are documented on public websites. Uh, we've backed them up to archive servers. I work with a research group known as uh -huh. Korea UFO. Um, we've done a lot of this research together and we've found the patents that describe right. the parts of these craft 
right. we have a reasonable understanding of how those patents work together to form the spherical drones that are currently seen in the air around the world. That are currently seen in the air. Oh, you're 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 teasing me. Oh, that's fantastic. And no doubt this patent, if it's published, or the physics or the material science of the concept isn't necessarily just NATO or the United States. It's probably international. I can well imagine China has a long history of working with lighter than aircraft, would be interested in aerogel vacuum balloons. Yeah, uh, we have proof that we've found that shows that China started their aerogels research program in 2011. Uh, wow. There are research papers that have been published in China about a material known as graphene aerogel. It right. is the lightest by volume aerogel that can also resist a vacuum in both directions. Right. Uh, the research paper that was released by China also contained a link to the funding of the research, which right. showed that China initiated their R&D project on aerogel in 2011. Curiously, 2011 is also the year that aerogel technologies in the United States released their public information about their advances in aerogels and airways. So let's just make this very clear that what you're telling me is all in the public domain. It's released public domain information, um, uh, which you and your group have squirreled into and are disclosing stuff that people have chosen to put out. So no doubt there's there's more secret dark stuff, but you tonight are saying what anybody w with a good research background could find. Correct. Uh, we've been researching this for quite some time. I myself have been researching the UFO phenomenon for over a decade. Um, we've been looking into aerogels on the side for about the same time. But earlier in the year, uh, we realized that the two were, were linked. And once we found our first proof, the pieces kept falling into place and falling into place. And I believe that we fully understand what is going on now. Oh, oh, you've just opened a very interesting can of worms there, Josh. So you're saying that possibly some so-called UFO UAP sightings could be a currently semi-secret or very funded and interesting technology into aerogel vacuum balloons. What what would a, a military or a nation use a um an a lighter than air vacuum aerogel sphere? For I mean, what would be its application? I believe that the spheres are being used as recon drones right now. They require no power and no fuel and can indefinitely stay suspended in the air column at neutral buoyancy. Right. You can attach a camera to the outside of the sphere. I believe there's actually six cameras, one pointing up, one pointing down, pointing out in each of the four directions. That would give you full visual coverage from that single drone. We've also found patents for a mesh network of drones that communicate between themselves. So I believe multiple spherical recon drones are able to form a visual network over a wide area by being left to disperse in the air column spread themselves out as the mesh and form a full surveillance. Right. They would need some power source for the electronics on board. But the electronics can be powered with a solar cell uh, right. attached to the outside uh, of the drone. With limited I believe night, that these are the sphere storage, in right. a cube that are being seen by Ryan Graves, who testified to Congress about this exact issue. Right. So we've definitely had reports in Congress specifically talking about spheres inside cubes. And also we've had the Mosul sphere, which exactly fits what you're just saying. Um, and 
very strangely, we've had Commander Fravor seeing a Tic Tac. Now, Tic Tac is exactly the other shape that you described, which would be like a pressurized tank, a lozenge shape. Could that, did that demonstrate some of the um, maneuvering capabilities of a vacuum aerogel balloon? Uh, I believe that the large spheres seen near Eglin Air Force Base uh, and reported to Matt Gates were also advancements of this technology, a scaling up of the small spheres to a bigger sphere that right. could then fly in a diamond pattern with four other uh, pi other piloted um, AI drones. Oh, right. So this network idea. But going back to the so-called Tic Tac sighting um, off the coast of uh, San Diego in the Pacific, that's quite a while ago now. So do you, could that could that have existed? Could that be a, a vacuum aerogel balloon device, um, not a sphere, but a Tic Tac shape going back in, uh, to the date that Fravor saw it? Uh, if you have the sphere, you then scale up to the rounded cylinder. I believe what they actually did is build the Tic Tac in a large gas uh, pressure vessel, similar to a propane tank that you would see at a gas station where you would fill up your smaller barbecue tank. Right. They would fill that with aerogel precursors, build a Tic Tac inside of the large propane vessel, and then equip it with pumps, with intakes, with exhausts, with electronics, such that it could be turned into a vacuum drone as well. I believe this technology was, again, as I said, done by Triad National Services, LLC, Los Alamos National Laboratory, and the right. Department of Energy. I believe that when they made this advancement in the technology from spheres to the Tic Tac, they decided that they needed to do a test of it. Ah. They then looked for the best conventional pilot within the U.S. Armed Forces, which at the time would have been Commander David Fravor. Absolutely. And unbeknownst to Commander Fravor, I believe that Triad, the DOE, and LANL set up a test to see if the best conventional pilot would be able to see this new Tic Tac shaped drone. When Commander Fravor saw it and asked for tasking to go and investigate, he went down towards the drone. They realized that he was able to see it, right. vented the pressure from the internal tank, and it would have incredibly shot up in the atmosphere so fast that it would be there one second and gone the next second up into the air so fast that neither he nor the other pilot, uh, Dietrich, would have been able to see it. So it fits the whole description where Commander Fravor says that it, that it behaved in a way that didn't fit with any technology that he knew about, because he didn't know about it. And I've often... None of us on... did. <laughs> right. It was pretty secret. And hang on. They're testing it in a military operational advanced advanced weapon area. And as you say, Fravor actually trains the best Navy pilots. What bet I'd never thought of it. You know, why wasn't it some junior pilot with an F-18? Commander Fravor is the creme of la creme of pilots. So you think it was actually a test and so to see how he would would react to it, how psychologically he would react to it. And so you believe that his reports of what he saw are accurate? Yeah, I believe that his testimony, both on his right. original Joe Rogan podcast and his testimony to right. Congress are consistent. I believe that they're also consistent with the craft that I'm describing. We've released diagrams. We've released a document on our Twitter feed that describes these craft in detail, it right. links to the patents, it shows where the budgeting came from. Right. I, I believe that we've answered this question. It is not aliens. Going back to the practicality of how it works, 
because I think if we could nail it actually being a you know a physical object. So I can see it loitering at any altitude with differential pressure. I can also imagine, but I would want to kind of see it and look at some physics of how um, it would, how it would accelerate vertically. But how on earth does it move laterally? Does it have any kind of lateral propulsion? And some of the sightings that David Fravor and others have said on the Tic Tac shaped object was they look like uh, antenna or or protrusions coming from one side of it, maybe on the base. Do you know anything about them? Yeah, so as you mentioned, going up and down is a relatively easy matter yeah. of changing the internal pressure of the vacuum chamber versus the outside pressure of the atmosphere or the water. These these craft can actually enter the water and right. suck water into their vacuum chamber and expel the water to uh, rise in water and in air as well. Right. I believe that how they move in directions other than up and down is by sucking air into an air intake with a pump and then expelling the air through a vector thrust pump. Uh, the the two nozzles. Yeah, similar to a Harrier jump jet. Right. Uh, at least one of the nozzles can be rotated such that it can expel the air pressure from inside or that it is constantly drawing in uh, to provide thrust. Uh, and... I believe there's even an example of this. Uh, it, there is a 2014 video that was released by Leslie Kane. Yeah. Uh, it shows a Chilean helicopter uh, encountering a unknown object that was hovering. Uh, ah. The object was not visible uh, to the visual spectrum, but did show up to their infrared camera on their helicopter. Right. The object in question uh, expels a plume uh, of dark material behind it, which I believe to be colder than air gas. It's it was not, inside it, of it before. Right. It's and a, fl a fleur image. Right. Gas, right. Yeah. After expelling the gas on the fleur, as described by physics, the craft starts to move forwards. So why aren't we visually, as members of the public all over the world, seeing these network of drone spheres? everywhere how on earth could you mask their visual signatures you know they'd be quite obvious wouldn't they i believe these are relatively scarce still in number i don't think that we've made a whole ton of these i right. think they're using the same ones over and over um they would be used in the most important areas for them to be used if there was a training zone Right. and you deployed a bunch of spheres in a mesh recon network, they right. would allow a operator back at the base to use a VR headset to have a uh -huh. real-time view of what is going on in that training area so that they can evaluate pilot performance, etc. cetera. Uh, the final thing is we actually found a patent that claims the craft are coated with a photon absorbing layer of black silicon. I leave this up to your viewers to uh, determine if they believe that based on the patents, but the patent exists and is consistent with uh, right. drones that have been seen. Well, I can help on that because um, in Imperial College in London, um, this person has invented a metamaterial. Metamaterial is a material that interferes with different frequencies. An early metamaterial would be rubber that's coated around submarines that can absorb sonar sound. A more sophisticated metamaterial can absorb uh, microwave energy, the stealth skin of stealth airplanes. It's literally, it's almost like an aerogel. Um, some of it, 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 its early um, incarnations was actually horribly fragile, but it's now become um, stronger. So it, it le needs less maintenance. Early stealth fighters had to be babied. Uh, today, um, the metamaterial has quantum leaped into 
optical frequencies. So if you could make a metamaterial that actually, it doesn't absorb, that's the most important thing to know, it redirects. So if light photons go into a material, into a maze of convoluted, faceted, just the right frequency stuff, it doesn't come back out again. There's no reflection. So yeah, uh, um, tanks are being coated in it. It obviously works better at night because if it's absorbing all light and not reflecting it, it appears black. Although I think you can probably change the color. But imagine if you had a light absorbing skin on a drone in the air against a dark background, it's gone. Uh, yeah, there's not many photons at light. And as you said, when those not many photons are scattered, that's even less of the object that you can see. Uh, what you describe right. is incredibly consistent with the patent uh, that we found. Okay. And uh, it's also consistent with the sightings that we've uh, seen and are recorded on the internet. Wow, it's very, very interesting. As, a, as an idea of a technology, I'm immediately thinking, my question to you about moving it laterally, you don't really need to. Imagine you could you could pop these out of submarines, like bloop, and just it just goes up. And all you need to do is place them in a maybe a few kilometer distance and make, as you say, a network over a battlefield, over an area of surveillance. And um, you can get rid of them as well. Boom. They've gone. Uh, you know, th th they would make long loitering, invisible, networked uh, uh, surveillance drones. And the other thing that I've discovered is one of the weakest links of drones that a lot of people have worked on with encrypted radio signals is sending the signal from the drone back down to Earth to a ground station. Forget that. That doesn't happen anymore. The signal goes up. <laughs> so all these signals are being picked up by a satellite network, which then um, collects synthetic aperture radar stuff and then can send it down as a single encrypted beam. You uh, So it stops anybody eavesdropping on what these drones... The drones have no RF signature from the ground because it's all going up. There's, have you seen anything about tr data transmission from these types of drones? It's exactly as you described. There is a patent for this procedure okay. that is on, uh, that is assigned to Los Alamos National Laboratory, the same right. place that has been making these drones. It describes a mesh network of several space-based or atmosphere-based drones right. that are used together to interconnect. They communicate with each other, and they can also send signals, as you described, up to a satellite. Sure. Here in Europe, um, Airbus Industries, who, who are obviously a big defense contractor, as well as building very nice airplanes uh, down the road from us in Toulouse, um, have actually, I can't believe they actually chose this name, actually for um, uh, European uh, defense, have built Skynet. Why did they choose it? Call it Skynet, which is a, um, a satellite network for receiving synthetic aperture radar um, images and then being able to send it down as, to specific headquarters where they're decoded. So this definitely definitely happens. Oh, I, I, am I believe that it does. I, I believe that this is also being right. used as a lie uh, to the general public. And I believe that it goes back quite a while, too. We, we've been tracing this backwards in its chronology, um, that they didn't just start with a spherical drone. Uh, the aerogel came from somewhere. Right. Uh, and it looks like it goes back as far as 1930. Uh, you're talking, 1930 but you're not just aerogel, but you're talking about non-gas permeable aerogel. Which, Correct. Yeah. Right. That's 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 the quantum leap, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And wow. uh, that was uh, a man named Kistler in right. 1930. And uh, curiously, that's the same year that Einstein and Szilard uh, invented a refrigeration uh, device that required no moving parts. Uh, 
Um, I believe that if you take a refrigerating device that has no moving parts right. and apply that to a pump that contains aerogel on the inside, you can actually form a vacuum pump with no moving parts that requires minimal power. Simply heating up the aerogel right. Right. will cause air to be drawn into the pump. Yeah, you've got that immense. Uh, you're using natural resources of of air pressure with exotic material um, to actually make something work without burning oil. It's it's a fantastic idea. So, do you think aerogel has other potential uses? Uh, obviously, it seems to be funded and in the domain of militaries throughout the world. But do you see this? aerogel vacuum balloon or containment of of differential pressure has been beneficial outside of the military i've put forth an idea on our korea ufo public twitter that right. actually describes a method of turning this technology into energy and i understand that this is going to sound like an extraordinary claim, but I believe that this technology leads to free energy, and I would like scientists and the public to challenge what I'm saying. I want this to push forwards so that it's not hidden and sequestered within a secret part of the government. Uh, Nothing I've done is illegal. Right. This information is all on the public internet. I have not exposed any atomic secrets. These items do not radiate any energy. They do not require any energy. It is simply material science right. being exploited in novel ways. And internationally. So we're not we're not fingering one particular nation as keeping this to themselves. It's obviously a technology which is out there, which could be exploited by many nations of the world. And it's very interesting to know the physics, the mechanics of how it works. Josh, I think that you have introduced a fantastic subject. And I think what we'll do is end it here today and come back and talk about other applications and other stuff that we probably have missed and answer viewers' questions. Um, be polite, be civil. Um, Josh and his group have done a lot of work into this. I'm new to it, but from what I hear today from Josh, it sounds very likely. I mean, I can hear you all screaming that Commander Fravis saw a flying saucer. Well. Maybe he saw an aerogel drone. Let's be open-minded. Let's actually look at what's out there and learn. Thank you. I hope you found that as revealing and fascinating as I did. I really want to thank Josh and his team for pulling together public domain information to reveal the bigger picture. In the last few decades, the world has gone from having a handful of government-owned spy satellites to thousands of both military and commercial eyes in the sky. Their true resolution is secret. But it was revealed in this unfortunate leaked USA government satellite image, 10 centimeters per pixel exists. Commercially, you can purchase a live satellite feed of your city's traffic at 5 centimeters resolution today. Higher quality than that is likely possible, but still restricted. But is there a better way? A way of looking down on us from a network of hundreds of cameras or other sensors. A way to closely monitor an entire battlefield or region. A way to cut costs deployed quickly into our increasingly unstable planet. Yes, a long loitering network of invisible aerogel craft seems logical. As soon as you can remain in the atmosphere, you eliminate rocket launch costs, lead time delay, and twinkle. Uh, yes, twinkle. Our Earth's atmosphere is effectively a fluid, refracting or dynamically bending air as light moves. Today, observatories have adaptive optics. 
that distort their telescope's mirror in negative lockstep to our atmosphere's distortion. This system for science looking up was, of course, originally a system for spy satellites looking down. So do I think that aerogel craft are in the sky today? Undoubtedly, yes. Deployed by multiple nations to monitor and control their population. To end on a positive note, Josh has researched novel energy generating systems using the incredible buoyancy and strength of this novel aerogel material. We are working together to bring you a second film, part two, pulling back the curtain of dark secrecy and shining a light onto an amazing material that might just transform our energy production. Rather than be solely in the hands of governments monitoring our every move, time will tell how this technology develops. But for now, the truth is out there. Thank you.